In this video, we're going to go over a little more advanced way of using the Ultimate Radio Menu. And we're going to be using it for a very simple item system to assign to the radio menu. But the concepts of how to do this are going to be very similar to the last video. The only difference will be in how to get the Ultimate Radio Menu to send a string key or an integer ID when interacting with the buttons. So things that I've already set up in the menu or into this scene is that I have a radio menu and I have it registered with the name item menu. And then I have a little item example with five different items in it. And inside this item script, we can see it's just a very simple item class with a name, count, and an icon. And then we have an items dictionary, which um, has a string and then an item. And then in our start function, we're adding to the dictionary what the item name is and then the item so that we can reference it by name. And then we have a function use item with this string parameter. And this is how we will reference the, the item itself. And then inside of here, obviously, once we know that it is inside the dictionary, we're going to modify its count and debug that we've used the item. So to get this working with the radio menu, first, we just need to create a public ultimate radio button info. And I'm just going to call it button info. And then this is what we're going to be able to send in to the radio menu. So actually, I'm going to go back into the scene and we're going to go to our example code generator in the script reference. We're going to make sure that the function is on register to radio menu. We're just going to copy this and we're going to put this inside of our start function. And then for our callback function, we want it to be the use item. And then for our button info, we want it to be our items, whoops, our items I dot button info. So now we're going to register this item to our radial menu. We're going to call back this function when the, the button is interacted with, and then we're going to register it with this button information. So in order to get it to use a key um, when in being interacted with, before we register it to the radial menu, we want to modify the button info to be able to have that key. So if we reference this, we can reference the key and make it equal items I dot name. So now when the button is interacted with, it will send this string value that we've added to the dictionary because it's that same string. We're going to be sending that over the button to this use item function. And then the other thing that we want to do is we want to assign the icon of the button info so that the radio menu knows what it is. So we're going to do items I dot icon. But then what we want to do is we know that we have a certain amount of count for our buttons. So what we want to do is actually after we've registered it to the radio menu, we want to do items I dot button info dot update text. And we want the text to be the items I dot count, whoops, dot count dot to string. And then this will update our text that's on our buttons to being the um, count of the individual items. So if we wait for that to compile, then we'll press play and you'll be able to see that inside of our radial menu, we've added these five items to our radial menu. And when we click on them, you can see that in our console, we used the apple. And then when we clicked on this, we used the key. But we can see that the text is not updating when we use these items. So if inside of our use item function, after we've modified that count, we know that we need to reference our button info and update its text. So if we do item dictionary, and we reference the item key. So we're referencing this specific item that is being used. Now we can reference the button info dot update text. And we can update the text to our item dictionary count dot to string. And now, just with that line of code, we can go back into Unity. And after it compiles, we'll see that the text is going to be updated to being our current item count. So as I use apples, you can see that they're being used. And the same thing with the water. But 
we can see that we can use them past when they should be able to be used. So after we're to zero, we don't want to be able to register or to interact with that button anymore. So what we can actually do is we can call or we can say that if item dictionary item key dot count is less than or equal to zero, which means that we've exhausted our items. That means that we would want to call item dictionary item count or item key, sorry, item key dot button info dot remove from radial button. And what this will do is actually delete our button from the menu, which will make it to where then we cannot interact with it anymore. So with just that, if we go back into Unity and let it compile, and now we can see when we press play, we can use the items. And then once we use the items up, we can see that it deletes the item and repositions all of the buttons on the menu. And you can see that as we delete other items, we can see the text being updated correctly, and we can see them being removed off of the menu. So these are this is a little bit more advanced way just with updating the the count or the um the text as it goes and other things like that, but it kind of shows how the button info can be used to communicate with the radial button that it's been assigned to and how you can update the information to the user. So hopefully this video shows a little bit more how to use the ultimate radial menu.